Groovy. Hey everybody, Jim here. Thanks for joining me. You know, recently I was having a conversation with a friend of mine about the pros and cons of Street Fighter V. And even though we're both massive Street Fighter fans, we were kind of lamenting the fact that Street Fighter is pretty much the only fighting game Capcom is putting out anymore. And we started to reminisce about the good old days when Capcom was making a lot of arcade games, and in particular, a lot of really great fighting games. So that conversation touched a nostalgic nerve with me, so I felt the need to put together this, my top 10 list of my personal favorite Capcom fighting games. Okay, so before we get started on this list, I'm going to lay down a couple of ground rules. Number one is that to keep the list nice and diverse, I'm only going to include one game per series. And number two, the obligatory, this is just one man's opinion. This is my personal top ten list. I'm sure you've got your own, and I'd love to hear what they are. With that being said, let's get started. Number 10. Choco Senki Kikayo, also known as Techromancer seems to be one of those games in Capcom's library that most people have forgotten about. And for the life of me, I can't understand why. Because it's awesome. You take control of a large cast of giant robots and monsters and do battle in a bunch of different environments. Think something like King of the Monsters by SNK, only on greatly updated hardware. There are power-ups scattered all around each stage. Every character plays very uniquely from the others and has a huge array of special attacks and the super attacks are really flashy and over the top with every match ending with a huge explosion. On top of that, the game is presented in the style of an episodic 80s mecha anime, which is really cool. It's not exactly your typical Capcom fighter, but with fun gameplay and great presentation, you can't go wrong with Techromancer. And it earns the number 10 spot on my list. Check it out. Number 9 Star Dragon 2 Nightmare of Billstein Star Gladiator 2, aka Plasma Sword, and really how could you not love this game? It's Capcom's own Ode to Star Wars. You get a huge cast of characters with looks and weapons directly inspired by George Lucas's epic saga. You'll see light sabers, light axes, light rings, light yo-yos, and a whole bunch more. The gameplay in Plasma Sword is outstanding. It's a 3D fighter, but plays more like a 2D fighter, only you have the ability to sidestep around your opponent. A lot like Street Fighter EX or Rival Schools, except you have a bunch of cool weapons thrown into the mix. Plus you get some really nice looking sci-fi inspired environments to fight in, and a soundtrack that manages to be both passive and aggressive at the same time, but always remains awesome. In short, Star Gladiator kicks ass. And it's a series I'd love to see make a comeback. Then 
倒してきた Number eight. Cyberbots. Now, this is a game that's truly a work of art. Take something we all know and love, 2D fighting games, and throw in something else we all know and love. Giant robots. And you've got something that'll put a smile on any gamer's face. You just pick your pilot from a cast of colorful characters, choose your favorite robot, each of which has its own array of special and super attacks, and then unleash havoc in the destructible stages. Cyberbots features a very simplified fighting system, making use of only two attack buttons and a boost button. This makes it a very pick up and play type game that pretty much anybody can enjoy, regardless of skill level. Plus, the graphics and sound design are both amazing. This is unfortunately a game that never got released outside of Japan, at least for consoles, but if you can play import Saturn or PlayStation games, Then I'd recommend making this one a priority. It's awesome. Two, get combo. Four, get combo. Seven, get combo. Target destroyed. Number seven. Now here's a game that puts a big old smile on my face, and that's Pocket Fighter. Just like Cyberbots, this game features a very simplified control scheme that makes it a very easy game to pick up and play and start having fun with immediately. You're given a cast of characters taken from Street Fighter and Darkstalkers, shrunken down into chibi versions of themselves. Each character has a selection of special moves that are displayed at the bottom of the screen. And leveled up as you collect gems that you beat out of your opponent. I think the thing that puts this game over the top for me is the attention to detail and all of the Capcom fan service. Every stage is loaded with cameos by characters from pretty much every major Capcom release from the 90s, and even the playable characters themselves cosplay as other characters in the middle of combat, and that's just awesome. With beautiful 2D graphics, an outstanding soundtrack, and gameplay that's so fun it's irresponsible, Pocket Fighter gets the number seven spot on this list. <laughs> Number six. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Now this is a game that doesn't follow the typical Capcom 2D fighter mold. Sure, if you've played a lot of 2D fighters already, then you'll have a decent grasp of what to do here. But each character has such a unique and often strange playstyle 
that it'll definitely take some time to get used to. And that's something that I love about this game. It's anything but ordinary. Being inspired by a rather unusual manga series, you get a very interesting cast of characters to play around with. And each one offers something different. Your best bet is to try them all and find your favorite. It uses just enough elements from other fighters to keep things familiar, but mixes in plenty of new elements to make it a wholly unique experience. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, whether it be on PlayStation or Dreamcast, is a game with great presentation and outstanding gameplay that really stands out from the crowd. If you're a 2D fighter fan, you owe it to yourself to give this one a try. It's awesome. Number five. Marvel vs. Capcom. So, when going through all of the Marvel fighting games, starting with X-Men Children of the Atom, all the way up to MVC3, I settled on this one as my favorite, which might surprise a few people. You might ask, why not MVC2, which is also an amazing game? Well, let me explain. While the second game has a much larger cast of characters, I never actually play as two-thirds of them. This one has everything I need and nothing I don't. Plus, Onslaught is a way cooler boss character than Abyss. What really put it over the top for me though is the presentation. MVC2, in all honesty, features some really bland stages and music that have nothing to do with either Marvel or Capcom. But here we get some great looking stages inspired by both companies, my favorites being the Mega Man and Avengers HQ stages. On top of that, the soundtrack is amazing, with signature tunes taken from Street Fighter, Mega Man, Marvel Super Heroes, and a whole lot more. Plus, it's got the same great tag fighting gameplay that I'd come to love in X-Men vs. Street Fighter and Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter. In short, the first Marvel vs. Capcom isn't just a fighting game to me, but it's also an homage to the two companies, with great gameplay, awesome presentation, and plenty of fan service for both Marvel and Capcom fans, it's definitely my favorite in the series. <laughs> Captain America, win! Good work, soldier! Number four. ないぞ。ないぞ。ないぞ。ないぞ。ないぞ。ないぞ。ないぞ。ないぞ。ないぞ。ないぞ。ないぞ。ないぞ。ないぞ。ないぞ。ないぞ。ないぞ。ないぞ
The controls remain pretty much unchanged from the first games. The only significant difference is now that instead of only having two characters to a team, you have three. So you can not only perform a number of tag attacks, but also, if you have a full super combo meter, you can perform triple team attacks that deal a ton of damage to opponents. You have an impressive roster of characters to choose from to start with, and plenty more to unlock, and they're all unique and a lot of fun to play as. Plus, also as a staple of the series, the graphics, sound, and overall quality is right up there with the best of them. I love Rival Schools more than any grown man should, and for that reason, it's number four on my list. Number 3. It's hard for me to articulate just how much I love the Darkstalker series. It takes two of my all-time favorite things, that being 2D fighting games and horror movies, and mashes them together into a bloody mess that makes me happy. Vampires, zombies, mummies, the Frankenstein monster, and a whole bunch more go one-on-one -on -one in a more or less Street Fighter style setup, which is just fine with me. What makes Vampire Chronicle my favorite in the series is that it's basically the equivalent to Hyper Street Fighter 2. You can choose to play in the style of any of the three main releases, and you get every character to ever appear in the series to choose from, all with graphics and sound design taken directly from Vampire Savior, which I think is definitely the best of the original three. Really, I'm totally in love with the characters, settings, and overall design of Darkstalkers and it will always be among my favorite gaming series of all time. If you've never played a game in this series before, you have my condolences. Now do yourself a favor and pick one up today. You'll be glad you did. Feel the intensity when power and technique collide. Crush the competition. A battle beyond your imagination. Let the martial arts madness begin. 2001 is the year we make contact. Welcome to the revolution. Capcom. Versus SNK2, Millionaire Fighting 2001. When looking at the two Capcom versus SNK games, I had a little trouble choosing my favorite. They both feature a ton of great characters from both Capcom and SNK, and they both feature near perfect 2D fighting action. I actually prefer the presentation in the first game, same as with Marvel vs. Capcom, but all the things added to the second game just can't be ignored. A much larger roster comprised of characters I actually want to play as. No real throwaways here, additions include Rock Howard, Kyosuke, and Joe Higashi amongst others. Six gameplay styles versus only two from the first game, 
and the option to choose ratio matches, three on three, or singles matches. Plus, the presentation is still pretty damn good. Lots of animation in all the backgrounds with plenty of cameos from Capcom and SNK characters and an original soundtrack that has an oddly groovy sound to it, but is still really enjoyable. On the whole, this is a game that combines the best of SNK and Capcom fighting into a single package that I can go back to time and time again. It's a game that I can pretty much play forever, and it's my second favorite Capcom fighter of all time. Call it Street Fighter Zero Three. Call it Street Fighter Alpha Three. Call it Susan. If it makes you happy, I call it the best damn Capcom fighting game ever made. Why? Well, to start with, you get a huge roster of pretty much every Street Fighter character you could ever want. Every playstyle is represented here in full. Add to that three different gameplay styles and multiple speeds to choose from to further suit your preference. Feast your eyes and ears on some of the best visuals and sound design to come out of a 90s arcade cabinet and bask in the glory of what can only be described as perfect gameplay with ultra responsive controls, a deep fighting system and fun that will last a lifetime. Throw in little extras like world tour mode and even some great pocket station mini games and you've got a recipe for what I think is a fighting game that no 2D fighter fan should ever be without. Whether it's on the PlayStation, Saturn, Dreamcast, or in an arcade, you're almost guaranteed to love this game. It's Street Fighter Zero Three, my favorite Street Fighter game and my all-time favorite Capcom fighting game. <laughs> So there you go, my top 10 favorite Capcom fighting games of all time. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and do let me know down in the comments what some of your favorites are. And until next time, take care everybody, goodbye.